I swear, I hate when YouTubers start their videos like this, but today, guys, I have a little bit of a different video. If you don't know yet, about a month ago, Rocket Science posted a video highlighting the discovery of the new Herb Dash mechanic. But the thing was, I never saw any other YouTubers respond, so I figured it just must not be all that. But last night, I was procrastinating, the video popped up in my recommended, I finally got around to watching it, and I don't know if people are just sleeping on this mechanic, but I think it has the potential to be the most broken mechanic, bar maybe the half flip or the wave dash itself seriously i think it's gonna be that game changing so today i wanted to make sure you know what this mechanic is why it's gonna be so game breaking and how to actually pull it off So for those of you who don't know, the Curve Dash was a mechanic that I'm gonna say was recently discovered by a guy named Halfway Dead over at the Rocket Science YouTube channel. Now this guy is known for coming up with a bunch of mechanics and he is one of the most slept on creators out there. Seriously guys, there's nobody like him. But he posted this video revealing a new trick that takes advantage of one of the most age old problems in Rocket League. So let me put you in a situation here. If you're like me, you probably remember a situation where you were driving up or down a wall and you tried to jump. If you have any idea what happens when you're descending a wall and you try to jump, you'll notice that your car doesn't actually leave the ground. This is really, really frustrating and it's happened to me a lot before where I will try to jump on or off a wall and if you are on this curvature and you are traveling down or up the wall, because of centripetal acceleration, your car will simply stick to the curve. Now, normally this is a really annoying part of Rocket League, but take a look at this. Because of of the way that the car physics work. And if you want a more detailed explanation on this, you can check Halfway Dead's video. When you are going down a wall, if you time your jump at the perfect time, you can actually get the hood of your car to flip up. Take a look at this. If I'm going down the wall and I jump at just the right time, the front wheels of my car will kick up and I can slap them back down with a quick wave dash to get an instant speed boost. You see, the speed boost you get from flipping in Rocket League comes immediately when you initiate that second dodge, which after all is why wave dashing is relevant. But you see, the thing is, by taking advantage of the way this curve works, you can actually get an instant speed boost that can be followed up by a simple front flip or any kind of flip for that matter to reach instant supersonic with no boost off the wall. Seriously, you can be going down a wall and reach instant supersonic from zero speed just by kicking the hood of your car up and following it with a quick second flip. All right, so from my experience, the sidewall is going to be the easiest to start learning the curve dash mechanic. And this is because the markings next to the sidewall are very, very clear and easy to follow and are a super nice guide when learning the timing of this mechanic. At the end of the day, guys, this mechanic is simply a wave dash trick. So it really doesn't come down to a lot of things other than timing. So really what you have to be keeping in mind when you learn this mechanic is that timing piece. So to start, let's work down from the wall. And the first thing you need to know is that if you jump too early when going down the wall, you will simply hear the jump sound of your car, but the hood of your car will not kick up. So to repeat that again, the way you know if you are jumping too early when descending the wall is if you hear the jump sound, but do not see the hood of your car kick up. That's how you know if you're jumping too early. On the flip side of things, if you're jumping too late, you'll notice that the entirety of your car kicks up. This is also not what we want. We don't want to do a normal jump. The way that you know if you're in the Goldilocks zone of the curve dash is if the hood of your car kicks up, the front two wheels of your car kicks up, but the back stays grounded, which looks something like 
like this. And lucky for us, all of these standard maps have a nice guide so you can find the Goldilocks zone very easily. Starting on the sidewall, to reach the Goldilocks zone, the cue that you want to keep in mind is jumping just as your back wheels are passing over this line on the sidewall. If you jump, the front of your car will kick up and you'll be able to follow it quickly with a wave dash. It is that simple. Once you get the timing down, you can learn this mechanic in a single day. So that's the sidewall. The other most common use that I forecast in competitive play is gonna be rotating down off the back wall. And just like the sidewall, we have a very, very nice cue to help us here. So the Goldilocks zone for coming down the end walls is then going to be not when your back wheels cross this gradient, but rather when your front wheels do. So if you're driving down the wall, pay attention to when your front wheels just pass this line and then initiate your jump. Now, once again, keep in mind off the back wall, there is a much slimmer room for error. So start by practicing this off the sidewall and not the back. With a little bit of trial and error, you can start to get a feel for the timing, and you'll notice that right about when the front of your car passes that line is when you want to initiate the curve dash. From here, it's just a matter of trial and error. Even if you're going fast, know that the actual timing for when you want to jump still doesn't change. It's just a matter of hitting the jump while your car is in the Goldilocks zone. Keep in mind the input delay will affect your results. So because I have a pretty quick computer, this might look a little different for you. You might need to jump just a little bit sooner if you are running a slower system, but big picture, the timing should be similar. So give this a shot and let me know how long it takes for you to start hitting curve dashes consistently. So that was pretty crazy for me in its own right. To be able to see how meta curve dashing might become and how easy it is to pull off, that was pretty shocking for me. So if that surprises you, you'll be even more surprised by what comes next. You see, the second video that I got recommended after I watched this curve dash video from Halfway Dead was his video on the Sonic Flip. Now, if you don't know what the Sonic Flip is, the best way I can explain it is by showing you an example. But the connection I started to make, and that you might too after watching this, is the Sonic Dash basically just takes advantage of this same curve dash interaction when it lands with its nose on the ground to kick your nose up and give you an instant wave dash. You see, just like when you're coming down the wall, a Sonic Flip, if timed right, will get your car to land with its nose down. From there, you just have to click jump right after you land to kick the front wheels of your car up just a little bit and prone yourself to instantly wave dash. Seriously guys, anytime you're landing for an aerial, if you can time this right, you get an instant landing wave dash, which is basically a speed boost out of nowhere. And I can see how a mechanic like this can become game breaking if perfected by the pros. So once again, the Sonic Flip is a harder variation of the Curve Dash. When you're Curve Dashing off the wall, I think there's a big room for error and the mechanic is very forgiving. But when you're Sonic Flipping, you have to make sure you land with your nose down and time your jump just when your back wheels are hitting the ground to be able to get that little forward kick of your car. But even more than the Curve Dash, I can see the Sonic Flip being game breaking if done right. Seriously, I'm no mechanically cracked player, guys. I've peaked in Grand Champ, and the reason I'm there is definitely not due to my mechanics. But if I can learn the Curve Dash and then the Sonic Flip in only two days of practice, I can't imagine what pro players are gonna be able to do with this mechanic in just a few weeks. I mean, think about it. When Musty discovered the Speed Flip, a lot of people thought it was too mechanically difficult and never going to be necessary in the meta. But a year later, we're now seeing players in Diamond speed flipping to their kickoffs, and in competitive play, the speed flip is basically an essential. So I can't imagine what competitive play is going to look like in a year when players find other ways to use this flip. Which brings me to my final point, the crazy applications that this mechanic might have. You might think, oh, okay, that's great. A little speed boost when you land from an aerial, that's not gonna be game breaking. Well, let me stop you there because the applications of this instant wave dash don't just stop 
at the aerial landing. The fact is, this little kick of your car can be done when you are landing from any position, which means you could half flip into a sonic flip forward. You can speed flip into a sonic flip forward. Whatever the situation is, if you can get down consistently pushing your nose forward and timing that second jump, which look, I'm already almost able to do, you're going to be able to get an instant speed boost whenever you land. I can see in the very near future, the half flip becoming just the first step of the fastest turnaround in the game. I can imagine pro players half flipping, instantly shuffling into a sonic flip and getting back to their net in no time at all. This is seriously going to break the game. And finally, I can imagine players starting from the straight up kickoff spawn, speed flipping, then landing and sonic flipping into the ball to get to the ball in the same time that it took to do the fastest flip previously. But now, because of the sonic flip, you're gonna be able to get there while still holding on to 30 boost. This is seriously, seriously, seriously game breaking. Now to avoid turning this into a 30 minute video, I'm gonna close out with a few final thoughts here. But you heard it here first guys, the spooky shuffle, this speed flip into sonic flip on the straightforward kickoff, mark my words, is gonna become meta in just a few months time. If you guys wanna see it, I am happy to follow up with some additional tips once I feel like I've mastered these two mechanics in just a few weeks time. So stay tuned for more on that. Well, with all that being said, guys, I want to know, what do you think of these two new mechanics, the curve dash and this instant wave dash that you can get whenever you land? Do you agree with me? Do you think these are going to become meta in the future? Or do you have a reason that you think they're not going to be relevant? I've made all my opinions clear, but I'm interested to hear what you think down in the comments below. Also, if any of you can start to pull off the spooky shuffle consistently on this straightforward kickoff, I want to see it. Send your best clips over to my Discord linked down below. Since we're at the end of the video now, I feel like I'm kind of obligated to do the whole like and sub thing. So like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more content, and I will hopefully see you all with an update on this mechanic very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.